the nose. It's a completely unique cone-like structure of flesh, bone, cartilage, and nerves. It sits right in the middle of the human face and is arguably a person's most identifiable feature. The nose also has a spiritual significance. The word nose and nose is the most blatant example of the connection between knowledge and nostrils. Other examples are more gruesome. The history of nasal mutilation can be tracked way back to the Dark Ages and unfortunately still continues in some countries to this day. From the Quran, Surah 68, 10, 16. Nor yield to the wretch of many oaths, the mischief-making slanderer, the opponent of good, the wicked transgressor, the bully of doubtful birth to boot. Though such a man be blessed with wealth and children, when our revelations are recited to him, he says, they are but fables of the ancients. On the nose we will brand him. From the King James Bible, Ezekiel 23:25, And I will set my jealousy against thee, and thy shall deal furiously with thee. They shall take away thy nose and thine ears, and thy remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by fire. Both of these passages indicate that those who are disloyal to God were punished with a physical disfigurement. The symbolic significance of the removal of the nose all boils down to one thing, the separation of man and God. The nose is the entrance in which air, akasha, spirit, or ether flow into the body and enriches it. It is the nose that warns one of a stove left on, a rotten potato in a root cellar, a spiked tea. It is undoubtedly a powerful survival tool as well as a visible indication of identity and personality. Removing the nose would deprive a person of their ability to judge, to fully understand and comprehend their surroundings. Symbolically, this could refer to the ability to judge good from evil, not just on the physical, but in the spiritual. Let's take a look at something we've all seen before, the Sphinx. You can tell that the nose has purposely been obliterated as well as the beard. The cause of this obliteration is said to be the work of Sufi Sheikh leader Zayi Maldar, who apparently witnessed people idolizing the Sphinx and decided to blow it up with powerful explosives. However, it's well known that the Sufis are a religiously tolerant sect of Muslims, so this commonly accepted theory holds very little water. There's not much more information on Saim Eldar. Legend says that the Sphinx cursed and killed him with sandstorms a short time after the destruction. Some still cling to the Napoleon explanation, despite the fact that Napoleon fancied himself an amateur historian and showed great interest and respect for the Muslim faith. So both of these explanations are underwhelming and fail to explain the destruction of other statues in Egypt. A popular theory in modern days is that the noses were removed to obscure the racial identity of the statues and thus the identity of the inhabitants of mighty Egypt. If that was the objective, then why are there so many full-color paintings allowed to be left intact? We can clearly see the facial and tonal features of these Egyptians in statues and paintings left behind. If there was some kind of agenda to simply destroy the true identity of the Egyptians, it would all be dust. From the book, The Gods of the Egyptians, we have a quote. Unlike the foreigners, Syriac or otherwise living in Egypt, the native Egyptians never converted to Christianity. It was the Syrian migration to Alexandria that constituted the bulk of the early Christians to Egypt. The destruction of noses on statues goes beyond Egypt and into ancient Greece and Rome. We see here that not only statues of gods, but members of the Caesar's own family were vandalized in this manner. Here, we can see a cross carved into the head of a statue. And here, the same icon on this Egyptian wall. It's understandable to assume that the missing noses on all these statues are due to accidental damage, erosion, or the instability of the material in which it was formed from. And that may be very true with some of these. However, some of these, I think, have a different story. When we look into the etymology of the word nose, we get a very interesting definition. Nose. To put the nose out of joint. This common expression to signify that a new favorite has displaced the old, or that a newcomer has rendered the welcome of one who preceded him less warm than formerly, has no reference to the nasal organ. The Gaelic term, nos, custom usage. Whence, to put the nos out of joint, would be to disarrange or alter the pre-existing culture or usage, as when a new baby is born into a family, it attracts to itself the favor 
formerly accorded to its immediate predecessor. When it comes to noses and gnosis, there is an undeniable link. No one person has all the answers, but what any honest researcher can realize is that we have lost the knowledge of something so fundamental as our history. These statues are truly a symbol of our current state of mind unless we pull back the veil. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for more content as we're always learning. Until next time. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?